Can't How's my audio? My audio good then? Yeah, it sounds great. Okay, perfect. All right. All right. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining me on the Coffee with Coaches podcast again. I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today I have Patrick Adams with me. Patrick is an internally recognized... <laughs> Crap, not internally. Let's try that again. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the Coffee with Coaches podcast. Once again, I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today with me, I have Patrick Adams. Patrick is an internationally recognized leadership coach, consultant, and professional speaker, best known for his unique approach to sound team building practices, creating consensus and enabling empowerment. He's also the author of best selling book, Avoiding the Continuous Appearance Trap. Patrick, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me, Michael. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Looking forward to, to your questions. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Let's, let's just dive right in here. Question number one, Patrick, why did you become a coach? Yeah, so early in my career, I worked for two companies when I was in the corporate world prior to, I guess, as an internal coach, but worked for two companies. And you know, one of those companies had an amazing culture of continuous improvement, while the other one had what I like to call a culture of continuous appearance. And, you know, if you walked into both of those organizations, they would look very similar at the surface, but underneath, you know, all the floor tape, the pre-score cards, the lean posters, underneath all of that, you know, for the company that I call company continuous appearance was a very toxic culture where people hated to work. You know, there was high turnover, there was no stability, a lot of flavor of the month stuff. And in, in working for those two companies, it was like night and day, you know, as far as the culture goes. And for me being an, an internal coach at that time, I, I just felt like I needed to do something more for, you know, companies out there that are struggling with this culture of continuous appearance that, you know, that I call it, you know, I tried so hard internally to be able to, to change the minds of the leaders while I was there, but it was just like, no one would listen. You know, they kept pushing for, management to, to find this golden egg, that one solution that would fix everything. And, uh, you know, every, everyone was just so frustrated. So I just decided to dedicate myself to, to helping people who are working in companies like this to get out of this culture of continuous appearance, as I call it. Right on. Question number two, what are you doing in your coaching business today that is unique? Yeah. So our, our purpose in my coaching business is to empower and equip people for positive change. Uh, so I would say that we're successful um, because we model a culture that's very important to the people that we serve. Um, each member of our team shares five core values that support that culture. And those core values are people first, whatever it takes, dedicated to truth, growth oriented and fun. And so I think that's really what sets us apart is just being being completely aligned with that purpose and those those core causes that, that you know, we all have in, in, as traits, you know, among our, our team. So, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Moving on to question number three, how do you find your clients? Yeah, most of our clients come from uh, word of mouth and referrals. I would say, I would say probably 90% of them do. We tend to work with our clients for uh, long term because we, we build strong relationships and obviously they, they see the, they see and, and feel the results of the work that we do with them. But I would say that's where the majority come from is word of mouth and referrals. Mm -hmm. Okay, right on. Question number four, what is the biggest challenge that you face as a coach? Yeah, so I would say for us or for me personally, the, the greatest challenge is when I have, you know, I've been hired into companies where, you know, an executive leader hires us in, but then hands me off to maybe a manager and says, you know, coach this person, you know, go fix it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, business improvement only only comes when an entire team is engaged and in full support. And so when you have executive leaders, similar to the leaders at company continuous appearance that I, I talked about earlier, um, when you have those leaders that aren't engaged, that don't think that they need coaching or, you know, they, they think that they're too good for that and they kind of hand it off to, to someone else in hopes that, you know, someone else can take care of things. I think that's probably my greatest challenge is how do you how do you get them to understand the, the benefits and the value of having everyone fully engaged and in full support? You know, so mm -hmm. it's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, and question number five here, Patrick, if you had a do-over in your coaching business, what would that be? Yeah, so I would say to be patient. You know, sometimes I want things to happen 
too quickly. I am, I'm very much a driver. And so, you know, I do have a great team, but sometimes I push uh, things myself to try, I try to push things myself too quickly, you know, rather than tapping into my team and allowing time for things to kind of work themselves out. So I would say if I was going to go back and have a do over, you know, for my particular coaching business, I would say just to be patient and allow time to, for things to, to happen rather than trying to push, push stuff. I can, I think we can probably all sympathize with that one. <laughs> right. Awesome. Okay. And the big bonus question here, if what is one book that you would recommend all of your clients read? I mean, outside of my own book, there's, there's a number of them out there, I guess that I, that I would recommend, but I think Katie Anderson's learning to lead, leading to learn. She wrote the forward in my book, but it's a really great book about culture. So I would go there. Uh, also, if, if people haven't read Jeff Liker's Toyota Way, he just released the second edition of the Toyota Way. So that's another really good one for, for lean leaders. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Is there anything uh, that you would like to promote and where would people, where, where can people connect with you online? So I'm, I'm always available on LinkedIn. I, I do my best to try to get back to people as quickly as I can uh, with messages there, but uh, you can go to our website at findleansolutions.com. Uh, you can find my book at avoidcontinuousappearance.com. It's also on Amazon. You can search either Patrick Adams or avoiding the continuous appearance trap. So that's available in both the paperback or the Kindle. I'm also working on an audio book right now for that. So that should be coming out uh, towards the end of this year. And then we're also putting together a workbook that goes along with the book for teams to do book studies with. So, but I would say, you know, either find me on LinkedIn, website, shoot me an email. I'm pretty easy to access. Beauty. And satisfy my own personal curiosity. You're doing an audio book. Are you recording the audio? Are you, are you doing it or are you having yeah. someone else do it? Oh, I debated and I'm going to, I'm recording it myself. So I've been slowly working on chapter by chapter, but I have a recording studio in our office here. So that's, that's where I've been just plugging away at it and just doing it myself. So on a scale of one to pain in the ass, how is it recording your own audiobook? I'm curious. Well, it took me a while to get the right equipment, you know, being a, being a podcaster, you know, you probably have most of the right stuff. I didn't have all of the right stuff. We put in a, our office just was finished. I don't know what, three months ago. Mm -hmm. And so the recording studio didn't really have the right equipment in it, but we now have the right stuff that, so we were, you know, that the biggest pain was trying to record it to where it actually sounded good. And yeah. now we have the right equipment. And so I've been just plugging away at it and it, it's coming out pretty good. Sounds good. Right on. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Patrick Adams, thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Coffee with Coaches. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Michael. And thank you to everyone tuning in. We'll see you all next time.